No better guy than Scott Darling to bring in to chat about game one, 2015 against Nashville. Uh, but before we get to that, Scott, just want to look back at that season, your rookie season in the NHL. You signed with your hometown team, the, the Chicago Blackhawks. Just leading up to that, you know you're going to have a great team there with the Blackhawks at that point. What's going through your mind is, is you made that jump uh, to the NHL with your hometown team. I mean, obviously just pure excitement. Like, I've been a Hawks fan my whole life, still am. Um, you know, that summer leading up to it when I had options to sign with other teams, it was like, there's no question for me. Uh, and I was just so thrilled. And then obviously, like, the way the year played out, it was amazing, but, like, very scary and exciting for me, too. So I was just so happy to be a part of it. And then you get to the postseason, um, and I'm sure I think you, we interviewed you for a, a piece that's on Blackhawks TV, and you're like, I'm just looking forward to getting a nice uh, front row view of the postseason. That's not how it ended up going there in, in, uh, in the game one. A change in the blue paint. You see Scott Darling, 26-year-old kid who has never been in a Stanley Cup game. He is now. I'm happy that I was, like, so young and didn't realize the magnitude of the situation I was stepping into. and. I was terrified, I, but also excited. And, you know, that was one of the – and over my career, that was probably one of the best nights of my life, hockey-wise. So looking back at that game, uh, for those who don't remember, Corey Crawford obviously starts three first-period goals from Nashville. Um, you hop over the boards. Uh, the, the boys get a little spark, score three more to tie it up. Uh, you end up making 42 saves in that one. It's a double OT win. Uh, Pat Foley called it one of the more amazing performances in net in Blackhawks history. And that's a guy that would, that's a guy that would know. Uh, he's seen, he's seen quite a few performances. When you, when you look back at that and you hear all the, all the compliments and uh, about your performance, I mean, w what does it mean to you to reflect on, on the impact that you had in that game, but obviously more than just that game? Well, it means a lot, you know, it's like not only him saying that, like the stuff Q said, and then, <clears throat> you know, 10 minutes after we won the cup, Q comes up to me and says, like, don't forget about what you did in the first round. You know, it's like, that's something I'll hold near and dear to my heart for the rest of my life. And even just some of the comments the players made, Duncan Key scores to win that game in double overtime. But uh, looking back at that, um, the save that you made on Ellis uh, on the power play, he said that was a moment that changed the game. Nicholas Jalmerson said the same thing. Uh, at that point, you're tied 3-3. Uh, three, three. I think it's about nine minutes, uh, a little over nine minutes left in that third period. You make a sprawling post-to-post -post save and, and kind of keep things alive. Um, one of the more impressive saves I've seen in, in, in my time with the Blackhawks. Rivero finds Wilson back to her feet. Oh, what a stop by Darling and Ryan Ellis. Scott Darling comes across and takes one away. Wow, that was absolutely spectacular. Yeah, you can thank Kitch for that, former Blackhawks coach. He he warned us all about that play. They like to, to try on the power play. And um, I'm a student of the game, and I pay attention when we do our pre-scouts. And I kind of saw it happening. But, yeah, I mean, even that save, it's like kind of my claim to fame um, throughout, you know, my tenure as pro. And you, uh, being a Blackhawks fan, I know we've talked over the years about our, our mutual uh, love for Ed Belfour growing up in this area. Um, you're the first Blackhawks rookie goalie to win uh, in his playoff debut since Belfour did it in, in 1990. How much more, um, I know it's, an, it's incredible regardless, but how much more does it mean to you that you did that, um, you, you stepped in, you helped the, the Blackhawks win the Stanley Cup, not just any team win the Stanley Cup, but, you, but your hometown team? Yeah, it's, it's like hard to put in the words, you know. It's like you couldn't write a script better than how it played out for me. Um, and then even to be attached to the name Ed Belfort, like he's my idol. And then to be in the same round that he is and to have worn the same jersey and to have met him now. I met him when I was a kid, but now to like know him as an adult. And, you know, it just blows me away that this all happened. So you end up uh, playing after that. You win a couple more games. Uh, you go three and one in that postseason, 936 save percentage. After that game, uh, I mean, I'm sure you're riding high. Um, are you thinking you're going, you're playing the next couple games or the next game, or you're like, ah, oh, Corey's got it from here? Or what's your mindset after that? I think at that point, I, I figured they were going to throw him back in. And I actually asked uh, the coaches 
like later and I was like were you gonna start him game one against the wild or and they were like yeah obviously and I was like I knew it like I would too if I was the coach or if I was the GM I would put Corey back in he's one of the most underrated goalies in NHL history in my opinion and so I kind of knew that but I it was funny we got a good laugh out of it when I asked them We've always heard uh, so many great goaltenders have come through in Corey's time, um, yourself obviously included. Everyone speaks to how great it is to, to work with, with Corey and to be a, a, you know, a goaltending duo with him. What makes him um, obviously a great player on the ice, but what makes him a, a good uh, teammate for another goaltender? Um, I think it's just surprising how like, humble he is. and Because me on the outside coming in, I didn't know him. And I saw him as this superstar goalie. And, you know, even just like, for example, that series against Nashville, it should have been awkward. It should have been competitive between us. You know, like I felt bad that I was like taking his spotlight by playing. And he was like the, he handled it better than you could even imagine. Even with all the pressure on him from the media and like people asking him like, tough questions and yeah just the whole time I was there like I'm so happy to call him a friend today like he helped me so much and like he was through you know you know when he had injuries and when I was playing and stuff like that like he just handled it like the the truest professional that you could ask for. So it was a couple years in Chicago after that and then you head over to Carolina um, playing overseas a little bit when you when you look back now at your time in Chicago, what, what sticks out the most? What's the most memorable aspect of your time in Chicago? Um, there's a few things, you know, obviously just originally like getting to put on the sweater and like playing the UC, that was, you know, bar none, one of the best moments I'll ever have in my life. And then, you know, just the guys, like we had such a great group. Um, you know, the stuff outside of like on the ice, just like, hard games on the plane, you know, the dinners on the road, like stuff like that. And, you know, I'm just so happy I got to be a part of it. I think the depth is something always, you always hear when, when people are talking about the, the championship runs of the Blackhawks. 2015, no different, obviously, with you coming in, uh, the depth up front. Um, I always look back at that, the third line, I think, in, in the cup final was Sharp for Met and Tara Vinen. Like, yeah. That's, that's the third line. Third line. <laughs> Um, I mean, how, how important was the depth that you guys had to make that run? Well, the depth was huge. I mean, even guys like get forgotten, like Desjardins was like fourth line, but like he had a huge role and you got Burmy like taking face offs. He's on the third line. It's like, we were so deep. Like our, our lineup is crazy. And, you know, Stan did a great job of putting that team together, made some trades at the deadline. And you know, he pushed for it, and, like, we, we made it happen. Well, it was great chatting with you. That game one against Nashville was one of the uh, more favorite playoff games that I've been around for, uh, so it was a lot of fun to chat with you and look back on it. We miss you in Chicago. Hope all is well with uh, you and the family. Yeah, well, I miss you guys, too.